Good morning, fifth graders. It's kind of a dreary Thursday out, but that's okay. Um, you guys have made it to Thursday. You're almost all the way through with another week of e-learning. Um, that's so exciting. I really miss you guys a lot, but I know that we are trying to keep everyone healthy and safe, so that is why we are staying at home. All right, so now I'm going to read chapter 13 and 14 of the West Wing game to you guys, okay? So chapter 13 is titled, oh, I'm sorry, 14 and 15, we're on chapter 14. Chapter 14 is titled, Pairs Repaired. The snow plows and warm sun finished the job of freeing the tenants of Sunset Towers and the figure in the Westinghouse from their wintry prisons. Angela, disguised in her mother's old beaver coat and hat and turtle's red boots, was the first one out. Following Siddell's instructions, she hastily searched under the hood of every car in the parking lot. Nothing was there. Nothing, that is, and that didn't seem to belong to an automobile engine. So much for good gracious from hood space. Next came Flora Bumbach. Behind her bootless turtle tips, tiptoed through puddles. Miracles, miracle of miracles, the rusty and battered Chevy started, but the dress, dressmaker's luck went downhill from there. First the hood of the car flew up from in the middle of the traffic, then after two hours of watching mysterious symbols move across the lighted panel, high on the wall of the broker's office, her eyes began to cross. After three hours, the grin faded from her face. I'm getting dizzy, she said, shifting her position on the wooden floor. And worse yet, I think I've got a splinter in my fanny. Look, there goes one of our socks, turtle, stocks, Turtle replied. Flora Bumbach caught a glimpse of SEA, five dollars, eight and a half, as it went about to magically disappear on the left edge of the moving screen. Oh my, I forgot what that means. Turtle sighed. It means 500 shares of SEA was traded at 850 a share. What did we pay? Never mind, just write down the prices of our stocks as they cross the tape like I'm doing. Once school opens, it's all up to you. Turtle did not tell her partner that they had bought 200 shares of SEA at 15.25 a share. On the stock alone, they had a loss of $1,350, not counting commissions. It took nerves of steel to play the stock market. The Mercedes is wiped clean and shiny like new, the doorman boasted. His face reddened around old scars as he rejected a folded $5 bill. No tips, judge, please. After all, you've done for the wife and me. The judge had given him the entire $10,000. J.J. Ford pocketed the bill and to make amends for her thoughtless gesture, asked the doorman about his family. Sandy perched on the edge of a straight back chair, adjusted her round-framed glasses, repaired the bridge with adhesive tape across his nose, and told about his children. Two boys still in high school and one daughter married and expecting my third grandchild. Her husband just lost his job, so they all moved in with us. Another daughter who works, works part-time as a typist, she plays the piano real good, and two sons who work in a brewery. It must have been difficult supporting such a large family, the judge said. Not so bad. I picked up odd jobs here and there after I got fired from the Westing plant for trying to organize the union, but mostly I boxed. I wasn't no middleweight contender, but I wasn't bad either. Got my face smashed up a few times. Too many, though. Still got some pretty bad headaches, and my brain gets sort of fuzzy. Some dummy of a partner you got stuck with, huh, Judge? We'll do just fine. Judge's Ford attempt at a, fam a familiarity fell flat. I did try to phone you, but your name was not listed. We don't have a phone no more. Couldn't afford it with the kids making so many calls. But I did make some headway on our clues. Want to see? Sandy removed a paper from the inside of his cap and placed it on the desk. Judge Ford noticed a flask protruding from the back pocket of his uniform. But his breath smell of peppermint. The clues figured out by Alex McSuthers. Skies am shining brother. Skies. Sykes. Dr. Sykes witnessed the will. Am brother. Amber Otis? Or Otis Amber? Shine. Ing. Shin. The middle name of James Shin who? Or what turtle? Or what turtle kicks? Brother. Theo or Chris Theodraskis. Remarkable, the judge commented to Sandy's delight. However, we are looking for one name, not six. Gee, judge, I forgot, Sandy said de dejectedly. Judge Ford told him about Theo's proposal, but Sandy refused to go along. It seems too easy, the clues adding up to one message, especially for a shrewd guy like Westing. Let's stick it out together, just the two of us. After all, I got the smartest partner of them all. Shallow flattery for the big tipper, the judge thought. Mixothers was not a stupid man. If only he was less a Ob obsessive and less of a gossip. The doorman scratched his head. What I can't figure out, judges, why I'm one of the heirs. Unless Sam Westing just up and died, there is no murderer. 
unless Sam Wesley is apt to get somebody from his grave. I agree with you entirely, Mr. McSellers. What we have to find out is who these 16 heirs are and which one, as you say, Westine, was out to get. Sandy beamed. They are going to play it his way. What you need in an advertising what you need is an advertising campaign. What I need is half of the ten thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars is what I estimate the redecorating and the newspaper ads will cost. Get out of here, get out. Gray stared at his smooth broad face at the devilish tufts of eyebrows so high above those flashing eyes. Then she turned her back and walked out. Sometimes she wondered about the man. No, he couldn't be the murderer. He couldn't even kill the water bug in the sink this morning. Grace spun around to see if she was being followed on the footstep hushing carpet in the third floor hall. No one was there, but she heard voices. They were coming from her kitchen. It was nothing. Just Otis Amber shouting at Crow, something about losing their clues. I remember them, Otis, Crow replied in a soft voice. She felt strangely at peace. Just this morning, she had been given the chance to hide her love in Angela's bag, the big tapestry shoulder bag she carries, ne carries next to her heart. Now she must pray that the boy comes back. I remember them, too. That's not the point, Otis Amber argued. What if somebody else finds him, Crow? Are you listening to me, Crow? No, but Grace Wexler is listening. Really, Mr. Amber, can't you find another time to discuss your affairs with my cleaning woman? And where are you going, Crow? Crow was buttoned up in the black moth and winter coat. A black shawl covered her head. It's freezing in here, Otis Amber shut the window. Grace opened the window. The last thing I need is a gas explosion, she said peevishly. Boom, he replied. The two women were so startled that delivery boy sneaked up on the unsuspecting for the rest of the week, shouting boom. Besides shouting boom, Otis Amber delivered groceries from the shopping center to Sunset Towers. Back and forth and to and fro. Not only did the tenants have to restock their bare shelves, they had to add Westing paper products by the gross to order to their orders. Idiots, just because the will said buy Westing paper products, he muttered, hefting a bulking bag from the compartment attached to his bike. Even Crow was using Westing disposable, pa disposable diapers to polish the silver and the Westing paper towels to scrub the floors. Is that what happened to their clues? Poor Crow, she's taking the game harder than he had expected. She's been acting strange again. Boom, Otis Amber shouted as the intern hurried by. Idiot, mu muttered Denton D. Denton D paced the floor. Listen, kid, I'd like to help you, but I'm only an intern specializing in plastic surgery. It would be different if you wanted a nose job or a facelift. Had he meant to be amusing, it sounded cool. Chris had not asked for charity. All he wanted was to play the game with the intern. All the intern wanted was half of the $10,000. I hear your brother suggested sharing clues. Sounds like a fine idea. No response. Maybe the kid thinks I'm the murderer. The tenants must think so, the way they peered over their shoulders. And that delivery boy shouting like that, why me? I'm a doctor. I took an oath to save lives, not take them. I'm a very busy man, Chris. I have a lot of sick people depending on me. Oh well, plowing his fingers through his stringy mouse, moose brown hair to keep it out of his eyes. When would he find time for a haircut? He seated himself next to the wheelchair. The clues are in my locker. What were they? The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. For plain grain shed, Chris spoke slowly. He had practiced his recitation over and over, hour after lonely hour. Grain, oats, Otis Amber. For, shed, she. Ford, Ford lives in 4D. Ford, apartment 4D. Good thinking, Chris. The intern rose. Is that all? Chris decided not to tell him about the limper on the lawn, not until the next time. His partner would have to visit him next time, and the next time, as long as he didn't sign the check. Now, about signing the check, Denton Deer said, Chris shook his head no. On a bench in the lobby, Angela embroidered the trousseau, waiting for Denton. Dad had tried to teach her to drive, but she was too timid. He, too impatient. Why, brother, why bother with driving lessons, her mother said. Anyone as pretty as you can always find a handsome young man to show for you. She should have, she should have insisted. She should have said no just once to her mother. Just once. It was too late now. Theo came in with an armload of books. Hi, Angela. Hey, I found that quotation... Or rather, the librarian found it, you know. May God thy gold refine. Really, Angela thought it was unnecessary to remind him that it was Flora Bumbach and Turtle who had asked about the quotation. Not she. What lush lips, what white teeth, what fine and shiny hair. Theo fumbled between the pages of a chemistry book for the index card. On it was written the third verse of America the Beautiful. America, America, may God thy gold refine. Till all successes be nobleness, and every gain divine. Theo had begun reading the refine and ended up singing. He shyly laughed off his foolishness. I guess it doesn't have anything to do with money or the will. Just Uncle Sam's patriotism popping up again. Thank you, Theo. Angela stuffed her embroidery in her tapestry bag on seeing Denton Deer rush off the elevator. Hello, doctor. How about a game of chess? Let's go, the intern said, ignoring Theo. Sandy opened the front door for the couple, whistling America the Beautiful. The 
doorman was a good whistler thanks to his chipped front tooth. I can't drive you home. I'm on duty tonight. I'll take a cab. Why, you must go back to the hospital. Your crazy partner isn't dying, you know. She's not crazy. She made up her so-called wasting disease. I call that crazy. Nothing was wrong with her until the explosion in the Chinese restaurant. You're wrong. First you asked me to look in on her. Now you don't want my opinion. Anyhow, I called in a psychiatrist. Maybe you should talk to him, too. I've never seen you so troubled. What's wrong? The wedding dress isn't ready? The guest list is too long? You'll have to cope with more important matters than that once we're married. Unless you don't want to get married. Is that it? Angela twisted the engagement ring her mother made her wear in spite of the rash. No, she did not want to get married. Not right away, but she couldn't say it. She couldn't tell him. Them not like, not like that. Dutton would be so hurt. Her mother, the engagement was announced in the newspaper, the wedding gown, the shower. But once they found out she wasn't the, their perfect Angela. How long has she been sitting here in the hospital corridor? A man in a business suit, the psychiatrist, came out of Sidel's room. You must be Angela, he said. How had Sidel... How had Sidel described her? A pretty young thing. I hear you're going to marry one of our interns. She was going to get married. Her one claim to fame. How is Mrs. Pulaski, doctor? Do you mean is she crazy? No, no, more or less than anybody else in town. But the crippling disease, she made that up? So what? The woman was lonely and wanted some attention, so she did something about it. And quite creatively, too. Those painted crutches are a touch of genius. Is that normal? I mean, it's not too insane to shock people into noticing who you are, the doctor patted Angela's cheek as though she were a child. No one was hurt by her little deception. Now go in and say hello to your friend. Hello, Sidel. Without makeup, without jewelry, clothed only in a white hospital gown, she looked older, softer. She looked like a sad and homely human being. You talk to the doctors? It's a simple fracture, Angela replied. What else? Sidel turned her face to the wall. The doctor says your disease is incurable, but you could have a remission lasting five years, even more if you take good care of yourself and don't overdo it. The doctor said that. Maybe a few people could be trusted. Did you bring it, my makeup? I must look a mess. In the overstuffed tapestry bag under Sidel's cosmetic case, Angel found a letter. It was a strange letter written in a tense, rigid hand. Forgive me, my daughter. God bless you, my child. Delight in your love, and the devil take, doctor dear. Hast thou found me, O oh, mine enemy? The time draws near. Taped at the bottom were two clues. Thy beautiful.